Welcome back to the episode 5.12 of our video course Parallel Programming and Optimization with Intel Xeon Phi coprocessors. We are continuing the discussion of various optimization topics. In the five areas of optimization that we defined earlier, we have discussed scalar optimization, optimization of vectorization, and of multithreading. The next hardware subsystem on which one must focus in the optimization process is memory and caches. Memory traffic optimization is important both on Xeon and Xeon Phi, but the microarchitecture is less forgiving of suboptimal memory access pattern. Xeon Phi has less cache per core and less sophisticated hardware called prefetchers, branch predictors and in-order instruction buffers comparing to out-of-order buffers on Xeon that automatically improve data traffic in some situations. For algorithms that access large regions of memory randomly, data page walks are more expensive on Xeon Phi than on Xeon because of poor serial performance. While problems caused by poor memory traffic are various, the optimization strategy can be based on one rule of thumb – locality of data access. There are two aspects to locality – spatial and temporal locality. Spatial locality means that data accessed by the application should be located in memory in a compact way. To improve spatial locality, usually data structures need to be modified. For example, recall the module where we optimized Coulomb's law calculation by changing data structures from an array of structures to structure of arrays. In this example, we actually optimized memory traffic by improving the spatial locality of data. Temporal locality, or locality in time, means that if we use some data multiple times, we should reuse it sooner rather than later. This is what we will focus on in this module. To understand the importance of temporal locality, consider this example. We have a hypothetical algorithm that has two nested loops in i and j to perform some kind of work on all pairs of elements of arrays a and b. In our example, suppose that both array a and b have a length of 4. We are running this program on our hypothetical computer, which has the main memory where A and B resides, and it also has a cache for this memory. The cache is large enough to fit three elements of either A or B. And the cache is similar to Xeon and Xeon Phi caches, in that it has the list recently used, or LRU, eviction policy. It means that the cache will store every element fetched from memory, and when it fills up, it will evict the least recently used elements from cache to make room for new incoming elements. What happens when we run this code? In the first iteration, nothing is cached, so access to A0 and B0 is a cache miss on both, so both are loaded into the cache. In the next access, A0 is a cache hit, but B1 was never read, so this is a miss. Then again, A0 is a hit, B2 is a miss, and so on. Finally, we increment I and read A1 and B0. A1 is a miss because this element was never read, but what about B0? It was read four iterations ago. However, since that time we have read three other elements, so the cache filled up and evicted B0. So, B0 is also a miss. This pattern continues until the end of the loops. You can count the red squares for cache misses and blue squares for hits and see that this algorithm has a cache hit ratio of 6 out of 16. We can improve the cache hit ratio if we reorder the memory accesses. This can be done by strip mining the loop in J and permuting the alter two loops. With this new algorithm, we can see what happens with the cache. A0 and B0 both have a miss, A0 is a hit but B1 is a miss, so far things are going just like in the first algorithm. But in the next iteration, instead of going further in J, we reset J to 0 and increment I. We have a miss on A1, but what about B0? We have only read three elements into the cache, so B0 is still there. And we have a cache hit. In the next iteration, both A1 and B1 are hit, and this pattern goes on. You can count the red and the blue squares to see that this algorithm hits the cache 10 out of 16 times. 
What we did here is an optimization of temporal locality of memory access. We know we are going to use B04 times in this code, but in the first case we allowed so much time between accesses to B0 that it was gone from caches by that time. In the optimized algorithm we revisit B0 sooner, while it is still in cache. This improves the memory traffic and, along with it, performance. The operation that we performed here is called loop tiling, and the strategy that we applied is called cache blocking. We converted this algorithm into blocks that fit into our cache. Loop tiling is a standard technique for memory traffic optimization in systems with hierarchical caches. The procedure for tiling a loop involves two steps, street mining and permutation. If we have two nested loops, like in the top panel, we can strip mine the inner loop in J, as shown in the middle panel. After that, we permute the outer two loops, as shown in the bottom panel. The last code is a tiled implementation of the first code, and it may be more efficient in its memory access pattern because it reuses elements indexed by J sooner than the original code. In the process of tiling, it is important to tune the value of the numerical parameter tile, which controls the tile size. The tile has to be small enough to fit into the cache that we are targeting, but large enough so that the overhead of setting up multiple loops is not significant. The code shown here assumes that n is a multiple of tile. If it is not, then for correctness, we will have to add a remainder loop after the tile loop. Besides cache blocking, there are several other programming techniques to improve temporal locality of memory access. They include another form of loop tiling called unroll and gem, which is tiling for memory registers, cache oblivious recursion, and also loop fusion. They are discussed in more details in our book, and one of them, cache oblivious recursion, will be illustrated in the next module. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below this video. Thank you for tuning in and I hope to see you in the next episode.